Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Something good is going to happen to you today. And anything in your life that's not right is subject to change. And the one who changes not is on the case as you speak. So let's just welcome the Lord and celebrate his presence in our life today. He loves you so much, present tense, just the way you are. In fact, if he died for you and me as we were yet sinners, how much more does he love us that we are called the children of God? Amen. So bask in his love today. Bask in his favor, in his presence, in his grace. Just think about all of that. You know, you might, got, you might have things going on. But just put your attention on the love of Jesus and how much the Father loves you. And he so does. Amen. Well, we're going to be talking about Jesus today. It's a hot topic. And um, Jesus has always been on trial from day one. You know, he always had to uh, prove himself. And he did as he walked on the earth. He, he said many, many times, I am. I am your Messiah. I am God on the earth. You know, I've been prophesied all through the Old Testament, all the prophets, every single book. And you're going to have a little surprise today that the Lord gave me yesterday that I'm going to share with all of you. And that's going to be coming. But nevertheless, let's start. Father, thank you for the anointing on the word. Your word. It's an absolute. It's forever settled in heaven. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can go to it as an absolute truth. You preserved it and you are God almighty over all the universe. And why would anyone think that you couldn't preserve your word and bind it up in a book? And you have indeed. And we're grateful for it. Uh, we thank you for the anointing on it. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus name. Amen. In, in, uh, Philippians 2, 9, it says, wherefore God also has highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name. The name of Jesus carries power, character, and the ability of God. Incredible name. There's no other name like it on, upon the earth. Let's look at a few scriptures about the name of Jesus today. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not, unfortunately, did not comprehend it. In Revelations 19, because we just talked about that God is the word. Revelations 19, let's see, what is it? 19, um, six. Uh, I want to make sure, 19, thir uh, 19, 13. He, Jesus, was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Mm. Don't have to question that. Jesus is the living word. Now we're going to go through the book of John with several scriptures. John 2 verse 28. Let's look at that. I'm sorry. That's John 20. John 20, 28. And we're going to look at what 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 John says about Jesus, which is the whole book. I mean, if you want to have an overview and, and, and a detail about Jesus, just read the gospel of John and the three epistles of John. They're, they're just fabulous. So John, John 20, 28, and Thomas answered, well, Jesus asked him, uh, reach your finger here and look at my hands, Thomas, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Mm. Jesus said, Thomas, because you have seen me, 
you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's you and I. We're more blessed than the disciples were that walked and talked with Jesus upon the earth because we believe in a God we haven't seen. We put faith in what Jesus did for us uh, and haven't seen him. And because of that, blessed, more blessed are we. That's incredible. Think about that. That's, um, man, mm, I get happy about that. John 13, verse three, and it says, and Jesus, knowing that the father had given all things unto his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. Jesus knew what his purpose and plan was upon the earth. And he talked about it with everybody around him so that they would believe. John 17, 5. Wow. Let's look at verse. Um, let's just look at verse 1. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his hands to heaven and said, Father. The hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. How incredible words. Words you can't deny that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man came upon the earth to redeem all of mankind. And I'm saying redeeming whosoever. Whosoever would believe on the uh, Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. There is not a selected elite, uh, elite that God has uh, ordained from the foundations of the earth that would be saved. Wrong thinking. The, the Bible says that the father does not take pleasure in the in the death of the wicked it also says he does take pleasure in the death of the righteous so we have free will we get to choose whom we believe upon you know i uh, it was said before um there are a lot of good people in hell that heard the gospel message but did not believe did not use their free will to choose on what they heard. They put, didn't put their faith in Jesus Christ. They heard it. They did hear it, the gospel message, but they didn't take the step to believe and put faith in what Jesus had done for them. It's there for whosoever. Amen. Please take this truth and take the step of faith. And put your faith in what Jesus, it's not by your good works. It's a gift of God. It's grace that you, that God gives you to put faith in what Jesus did for you. Amen. Let's go to John. Um, let's go to Philippians 6. And I think we did read a little of this already, but Philippians 2, 6. Let's read it again. It's worth it. Philippians 2, 6, and it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. See, Jesus came the first time as a suffering servant. He's coming the second time as King of Kings and Lord of Lord and judge over the living and the dead. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. 
Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every name, even those who do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and put faith in what he did for them, they're going to bow the knee. Why not bow it now? Use your will to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Bow the knee now so that you won't be judged. See, those of us who are born again of the Spirit, we have been already judged by Jesus Christ on the cross. So when we bow the knee, we're going to bow the knee with praise and glory. Therefore, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not only as my, in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and, tremble, and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. The next verse is, don't do it with mum, murmuring and complaining. Do it with joy. Do it with joy because Jesus is in you, God in us, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Because he's in me, his whole nature is in you and I as a born again child of God. That's righteousness, peace, and joy in the kingdom of God. So why not work joy out? Why not will it work peace out? Why not work righteousness out? Why not work out the love of God that's been shed abroad in your heart? Why not represent Jesus well here and now in the flesh? You get to, so why don't you? <laughs> why not do it? And represent your Lord and Savior who paid a hefty price for you to uh, be saved here and now, working out your salvation, that one day we can glorify each, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ together for all of eternity in the presence of the Lord in heaven. Amen. I just get really excited about all this because he's getting more near, more dearer every single day, and the earth is getting dimmer and dimmer all the time. Hebrews chapter 1. Let's go there. Hebrews chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 8. Hebrews 1, 8. And it says, oh, there's so much here. But the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companion. And verse uh, 10, you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you remain and they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up and they will be changed, but you are the same. Jesus is a living word. He is forever the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why you can count on the word of God. That's why you can bank your life on it. Hallelujah. The early Christians loved not their life to the death. They, they, um, they overcame by the word of their testimony, the blood of the lamb, and loving not their, their life unto the death. Why? Because Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah. He was the firstborn into the world and let all the angels of God worship him. That's in verse six. Oh, so much, so much in Hebrews. Another really great book. Let's look at Colossians chapter one. Oh my goodness, power packed here. Colossians one, 
We're going to look at uh, verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God. Just look at Jesus and you'll see the Father. The firstborn over all of creation. For by him all things were created that in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones and dominion or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is glory to God. He is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn, from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness shall dwell. The Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made, made peace through the blood of of his cross. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. Well, let's look, let's look at Titus. Kind of giving you an overview of the New Testament. Praise God. We're going to have the Old Testament too another time. But Titus um, 2. Titus 2. Let's look at verse 13. Looking for looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people. Glory to God, that's us. His own special people, zealous for good works, Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. We are his chosen people, set apart, separated, his own special people. All those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jew and Gentile alike. Glory to God. Don't you want to be in on this? <laughs> Do it. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. Well, uh, how did Jesus get his name? By inheritance. We already saw that in Hebrews. Well, let's go back. Let's, I don't think I read uh, Hebrews 1 through 4. So let's read that. By inheritance, God the Father gave him his name. Look at what it says. God who is God who is God, God, God at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers, the prophets. Has in these last days, which we're living in, has spoken to us by his son, Jesus Christ, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world's who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he has, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angel angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they for to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Mm, 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 mm. By inheritance of the, by the father, Jesus got his name. By conquest, look at Ephesians 1.17. So good. 1.17, we're going to look, start at 17 to 21. Ah, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's a great prayer to pray every day. Father, give me wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus, in the knowledge of the word. Same person. The, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling 
what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceedingly greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. He got his name by conquest, which he works in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. That's us, the fullness of him who fills in all in all. So he got his name by, by he humbled himself. He inherited it and he got it by conquest. What are some of the Old Testament names? I'm going to give you just a couple. In the Song of Solomon 2.1, uh, Rose of Sharon and the Lily of Valleys, the Lily of the Valleys in the Song of Solomon. We're going to go to Isaiah 9, 6. And you're going to see, oh my goodness, wonderful, wonderful words, names of Jesus that um, have been given to him. Isaiah 9, 6. Praise the Lord. For unto us a child is born. That's Jesus. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Consular, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end upon the throne of David over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Of course, we know this is a time of the millennium when Jesus returns to the earth and sets up his 1000 millennium reign. The government will be upon his shoulders. Um, and he'll be called Everlasting Father, which he is today, Prince of Peace. Glory to God. Isaiah 59, 20. You know, Isaiah was Jesus' favorite book of the Old Testament. He referred to it many times as he walked on the earth because it spoke so much of, of, of him. Isaiah 59, 20, and it says, The Redeemer will come to Zion, and to those who turn from make up, saith the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so for the believer, the name of Jesus is all sufficient. Jesus gave us the power of authority to use his name. It's incredible. The name of Jesus has the power of God in it. So, what does it stand for? Emmanuel, God with us. God himself came upon the earth and humbled himself, was born of a virgin Mary, and he suffered and died, was crucified, and he uh, rose again from the dead on the third day, resurrected, uh, forgave us of all our sins on the cross, ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for us. God himself did this for us, that we could live forever and ever with him. We're on this journey going home, going back to the Father and putting our faith in what his son Jesus did for each and every one of us. God with us, Emmanuel. So how can we use this precious name of Jesus? Let's look at John 16. How can we put this name uh, to use in, in this journey that we're on heading home? John 16, because we have an enemy, right? Who hates that name and hates us because we're children of God. John 16, 23, and it says, And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father, we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, in my name, he will give you. So we go to the Father but we ask the Father 
in his son, Jesus name. And we ask him because he's, he's, he says in first John, if I hear, I will answer. So we come in the name of Jesus. Verse 24, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Do you, do you ask the Father for things in Jesus' name? The little and the big. The little and the big. Nothing's impossible with God. We, we need to start asking the, the Father for the impossible things. See, we do the things that are possible, right? You go about your life and the things that you can do, you do. God wants you to ask him for the impossible. That's when his son is glorified. That's where our joy is made full. I'm telling you, it's, he loves it when we ask him things like that. And I, and I mean the little things in life. See, when, when you see God the Father, your Father, ask, answering little prayers, it builds your faith to ask him for big prayers. And it's all about relationship. Um, I love that. I love it so much. You know, I, I had a ring that I lost that a, a really dear friend had given me years ago. I couldn't find it anywhere. I looked. See, I did my part. Seek and you shall find. Look and, you know, just look for it. Do your part. And when you do your part, you have confidence to ask the father to do his See, I had done the possible, but I, it was, I didn't find it. So I went to my father and I said, father, I, I've looked, I've done every, I've looked everywhere, I've retraced everything. And I'm going to ask you, father, in Jesus name, if you'll send an angel, even to pick that ring up wherever it's at and let me see it. Simple thing, right? My father, he loves us. He loves to answer our prayers because he's love. He's mercy. He's grace. That's the very essence of who he is. And he loves to glorify his son. So when we ask in his name, he loves to answer us. And I got out of the car and I had both hands full of stuff and I'm walking down the path and right in front of me was my ring. You can't make this stuff up. You just can't. So see, I, I remember these little things and that, that, gives me confidence to ask for big prayers, for impossible prayers, not just for myself, but other people. When I pray, I pray the impossible because God is a God of the impossible. Get out there in your faith and ask him to do what seems like it's not possible, but he, he wants to do that for us. So use the name of Jesus in Mark 16, 17. What's another way that we can use his name. And this is the power um, over the enemy that is in the earth today. And that's, of course, Satan and all his little demons. We have power over them because Jesus has given us the authority to use his name. Mark 16, 17. And these signs, hmm, let's go to 15. And Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I want you to think about something. When Pentecost came and the power um, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, what is the first thing? What was the fruit of that? What was the fruit of Pentecost? The first thing they did is go out and preach the gospel. And 3,000 came into the kingdom of God because they preached the truth of the gospel. And then 5,000 came in. They preached Jesus. Signs and wonders followed the preaching of Jesus. Let's, let's read this. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. See, people are in hell because they didn't believe in Jesus. That's what the word says. And these signs shall follow these who believe. Believe what? The gospel of the kingdom, the gospel, the good news. Jesus has come. He has come and he died and he, and he resurrected from the dead. 
and he did it for you so that you could be, get born again. If uh, no man will see the kingdom of God unless they be born again, born again of the spirit. Jesus came to have that happen, that we would repent of our sins and be forgiven and come into the kingdom of God. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. See, his coming, his belief, you put in faith and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ now gives you authority over his arch enemy and ours, which is the devil. And that you could speak in new tongues. Now you can. You got to get born again. Uh, your spirit alive unto God in order to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit deposited in your spirit so that you can speak in tongues, an unknown language to God, God the Father. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall be by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mm, mm, mm. All of this because you have been given authority and the power of the name of Jesus, Yeshua, his Hebrew name. Amen. Well, if you got it, why not use it? Do it. Use it. Go everywhere. Jesus will back up his name every single time. How about in Mark? Well, we read that Mark 16, 18 in ministering healing. Go find somebody to lay hands on. See, you're not the healer, but you're the instrument that Jesus will use to heal. So in order for that even to happen, uh, we got to be doers of this, of this wonderful commission, right? Um, you know, I asked the Lord a while ago, why did you ask us to lay hands on people? And he said, Karen, sometimes it's the only time I can touch their lives. Wow, that just really changed my whole thinking to where I just look for opportunities. I prayed for somebody in the parking lot yesterday. Just, you know, they were telling me about their shoulder. They were waiting on surgery. They got denied it from the insurance company. And I thought, I said, Father, uh, will you heal this person if I pray for them? As I said, of course. Lay hands on them. Let the power of the anointing of my son Jesus go into them. See, you be an avenue of what Jesus said to do. You're not the healer, but God needs us and that divine human connection to let the power of his Holy Spirit and the precious name of his son, Jesus, to be activated upon the earth. And he wants us, he wants to use us to do that. Yes, I said it. He wants to use us to do that. Let's go to Isaiah 61 for our last scripture today. But we just got, we have to believe in the power of the name. We have to put confidence in the name. Don't put confidence in yourself, but just be bold to, to be uh, happy to be used at the Lord and um, because he needs you. Isaiah 61, three, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. You're anointed to preach the good tidings of the poor. You're anointed to do that. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You're anointed to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the ones who don't haven't heard about Jesus. You've been anointed to proclaim the liberty to them and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Mm -mm -mm. You are anointed to do that, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, <clears throat> to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. Why? Why in a place of mourning, maybe you've lost a, lo a loved one. Maybe you've lost a job. Maybe there's just a loss in your life. Why can you have the oil of joy? Because Jesus is in your life and the best is yet to come. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. My goodness, uh, you can turn heaviness on a dime by lifting your hands up and praising the Lord. We have so much to praise him for. 
that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Are you wanting to glorify your Lord and Savior today? Is that important to you or to just think upon all the bad things and all the losses and all the things that you don't have? Would you rather glorify the Lord? And one way to do that is Psalms 103. The whole Psalm is great. And I've got a few minutes. I'm going to just, I'm just going to say it to you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Wow. Just think about all the benefits of knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior and how much you can praise him and bless him and celebrate him and thank him from a grateful heart. It produces the oil of joy in you. He's fabulous. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Are you glad for his mercy today? He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Praise God. He's not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Oh, the mercy of God. Oh, the preciousness of the blood of Jesus. For as, as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who reverence and fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Glory to God. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we're but dust. And as for man, his days are like the grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone. If today you hear the truth of the gospel of Christ, Harden not your heart. Call on the name of Jesus. Invite him into your heart. Ask him to forgive you of all your sins. And, and let the precious blood of Jesus cleanse you from all iniquity. And step in to the newness of new life. Born again of the spirit. And let the life of God flow through you. Verse 17. And its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his com commandment to do them. The Lord has established his thrones in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord. All you angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless the Lord. Just go ahead and bless him today. Be about the work of the Lord. Be about the business of the Father. And while you're doing it, bless him and experience the oil of gladness. God bless you all today. Let his presence just emulate from you and enjoy his presence in everything that you do. God bless you.